Let's discuss this a bit closer. Joining us now is the founder and president of the Article 3 Project and former law clerk to Justice Neil Gorchus, Mike Davis, alongside him, former federal prosecutor and assistant U.S. Attorney Francie Hakes. Welcome into you both this Friday. Thanks, Thank Bianca. You. All right, Mike, let, let's start with you. I, I know there's a lot of cases that, as Kilmany was talking about and as we outlined in the intro, uh, that SCOTUS is expected to decide. Are there any, though, in particular that you're following closely, more so that you think could have a, a, a significant impact on the 2024 political landscape? All four of those cases are the big cases that are coming. The Moore case, Moore versus Harper, is the case that under the U.S. Constitution's Elections Clause, it is up to state legislatures or Congress to decide the time, place, and manner of elections. You have a lot of these uh, Democrats who are setting up their, you know, partisan state Supreme Courts and their partisan commissions to do redistricting of the House seats every 10 years. The Supreme Court could hear this case. The problem with this case is that the North Carolina Supreme Court switched control Republicans took over the Republic uh, took over the North Carolina Supreme Court and reversed their bad decision. Now the Supreme Court needs to decide whether there's anything left for them to decide in this case. And so that's one issue that's that's going to affect 2024. I want to get into the Trump indictment, but real quick, Francie, you're, you're looking at the student loan forgiveness, which you say really isn't forgiveness. And we should be clear about the sort of the wording of that. Mm. Well, that's right. It's really just cancellation paid for by the American taxpayer. I, I think the, the contract implications here are actually dangerous for this country. If President Biden can unilaterally cancel the contract between a student and a school or a student and a bank, what, can, what contracts can he not cancel? Mortgages, uh, credit card debt? What kind mm. of contracts then is there a limit on? And I think that's actually dangerous. And taxpayers being on the hook for billions of dollars should scare everyone. And in a, you know, an election season, using it perhaps to gain voter traction is I, I canceled your student debt here, but someone pays for it. All right, uh, since we have your legal minds here, it's been about a week since we saw this indictment unsealed against uh, the former president. And you know, as we move forward and look sort of the pacing of the case here, one of the things uh, that's been called into question is that you know this really is the Presidential Records Act. This really, you know, the Espionage Act, the liberty that uh, Jack Smith and his team took and including possibly showing pictures in the indictment like these boxes, you know, tainting the jury, making them think that there were all these documents when in reality, Mike, there were 102 documents seized from Mar-a-Lago. Your reaction now as we look forward to Trump's legal uh, case here. It's the same reaction I've had since August 10 months ago. This is a bogus political hit by Biden on Trump over a uh, pre uh, over pre the Presidential Records Act. They're trying to turn this into espionage. It's nonsense. This is a former president getting into fights with librarians and other bureaucrats over his presidential records that he is allowed to have under the Presidential Records Act. There's no evidence whatsoever that President Trump was trying to sell this classified information or declassified information to our, our enemies. There's no, there's no evidence whatsoever, whatsoever he was trying to harm America, unlike Biden, who had five stashes of stolen classified records in several different locations, moved several times, accessible by their Chinese agent, and right. likely used by Hunter to secure millions in corrupt foreign payments for the Bidens. Fr Francie, how do you even find a jury? Because at this point, even those who don't follow the news have likely heard about these investigations, whether it's through social media, whether it's through family and friends. How do you find a fair and impartial jury <laughs> that, could, that, could, that could take this well, on. Yeah, you know, that's a great point. It's very difficult to find a fair jury at this point. And the president, just like every other defendant in this country, is entitled to a fair trial. You know, I was watching some walk by interviews with man on the street kind of thing the other day, and someone was saying they don't like Trump because he's a Russian asset. That is how wow. good of a job the Democrats and the media did in convincing, falsely convincing the American public that President Trump was a Russian asset throughout his entire presidency. And so you've got the media now pushing the drumbeat that President Trump is not just a Russian asset, but now he is a spy or he's dangerous. He's committed these crimes that risk the security of the country. And Mike is absolutely right. This is a documents dispute. Now, there's lots of smart people on both sides saying, this is about the Espionage Act or this is about the Presidential Records Act. But at its heart, this is a political dispute that has gone to the criminal courts only because 
President Trump is a Republican. It never would have happened if it had been a Democrat engaged in the same dispute. So I don't see how he can get a fair trial anywhere in the country. Yeah, hence the argument and, and what he's said over and over about election interference in this. Uh, Mike and Francie, thank you for the time. Thanks for coming on and your insight. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you both.